Father in heaven, thank you for today. Jesus, we want to make much of you and none of us. Thank you that you have given us your word that sustains us and upholds us. Abba, may we be faithful in the big things and the little things. May we not look at human appearance. May we look with righteous judgment by the word of God. May we look as the Holy Spirit sees. Let us constantly see ourselves among the judgment seat. Oh God, may we always be quick to judge our flesh and to find ourselves under account before your holy throne. Oh God, lest we be disqualified. Have mercy on us, O oh sinner, uh, us, us who are sinners um, outside of Jesus. Help us, O oh God. Now, these words, O oh Lord, that you've given, may uh, heaven and earth be witness to this call to anguish, this call to repentance, this call to eternity, this call to stay true to our word. O oh, Holy Spirit, Use whatever is here for your glory. Let heaven and earth hear. Let there be a continual offering of praise by the sacrifice of our lips. Boldly, constantly, in Jesus' name. May these words find the intended hearers. Be it from us or from any other means. In Jesus' name, amen. So, um, this, this message is called A Call to Anguish um, that the Lord has given. Uh, And Lord, I don't know how to start. I guess I'm just going to start by this is um this morning's journal entry. It's a culmination of everything that has happened. Um, and uh, it's different than what messages that, that I've been given. But here it goes: 12 19 2020, 6 04 a.m. Good morning, Abba. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for all that has happened this week. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the conviction yesterday that I had a sliver of trust in man to do right. I'm so sorry, Jesus. If all the election stuff didn't happen, the hidden evils of my heart wouldn't have come up. Oh, Jesus... What happened with individuals making statements on the basis of fear creates concern in my heart. This nation which has been founded by Jesus-loving people is now adhering to the very laws they enacted, vowed, promised to defend. A truly wicked which is known as managing life without you. An adulteress, which means neglecting vows and full of infidelity. Generation. Oh God, are we, are we adhering to vows we've made? Part of the reason why things aren't going well for us here is because we've neglected our side of the covenant. In reading one of the uh, statement, uh, I, I read something that when a covenant is made, you become a slave of you become a slave of whoever makes that covenant, and that's true. The covenants were displayed so that we would remember, read, reflect, and repent. And I'm talking about the Declaration of Independence, the uh, Mayflower Compact, Constitution. Wedding vows, 
promises we make to our children. They were tangible signs of an intangible promise. The Bible is a sign, quote, I'll be your God, you'll be my people, end quote. Jesus is the offering of that gift of that covenant. The cross is another sign of that covenant. The flame, the blood, the water, the word, creation, new creation, miracles, etc. All of these are signs at state. If you adhere to what I require, I'll adhere to what you need. Though oftentimes it's not in the way we think or want. And the requirement is, I'm your Lord, I'm your master, and you will worship me. Do things my way. You came for me, for starters. I'm offering a way back so that you'll never slip away again. This was a marriage arrangement, not a duty arrangement. In marriage, someone must be in a subordinate role. Otherwise, you both will be vying for power. Is it any wonder why marriages are messed up, why there are no fruits of peace? We've lost sight of the covenant, promise, vow. We've forgotten so badly why we're doing things. The reason why we've lost our bearings as people in the church is that we've forgotten our purpose and the reason why we're here. Folks, remember, Jesus is Lord, Master, Creator, Sustainer. It's not about Israel. It's not about Torah or the law. It's not about fighting abortion or protecting marriage or feeding the poor or freeing sex trafficking slaves or what we do or any of those things. Oftentimes we go out too soon before hearing the full instruction, just like children. Oftentimes I give children, our children, instructions. And I say, okay, I want you to take up the trash and, but before I finish with the instruction, the child is out the door with the trash bag. I didn't want you to do. I want you to hear. We forget that God's the everlasting Father. Jesus is the everlasting Father. Again, it's, it's very easy to fall into the trap. If I do, I look good with God. No. We don't spend enough time in his presence or get his heart. We also will have a flash of a moment with him. And then we will live subsequent days on that moment, time, moment or time that was spent with him thinking deceivingly so. That that's the way we ought to go. In essence, we don't check in with him as we're told to, such as pray without ceasing, rejoice always, give thanks in every circumstance, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And I'm not saying that just because, you, but I'm, okay, so I'm giving thanks, I'm giving thanks, I'm giving thanks, and now, there, therefore I'm good. No. No. Is it to the point of where it tear, where it tears your heart? Is it to the point where it tears your heart? Where you have to have him? Or you die? Where you want him so bad, you want to... It's got to affect you. It's got to hurt in that part of you that there's and, and I can only talk around it because it's a spiritual concept Watchman E says you cannot talk about spiritual things using earthly things as a one for one you know sometimes you'll see on the bag of uh, like a certain sugar substitute acts like sugar use one teaspoon for one teaspoon of regular sugar or, or something like that you can't do that with spiritual things. and You can't. It doesn't. You can describe using earthly terms spiritual things. You can only talk 
and describe around it, but you can never hit it on the head. And the only way to get there, as foolish as it sounds, to those who don't know what I'm talking about, is the cross. Is everything that is wrapped up with the crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. God Almighty, who died and poured out for us. We don't act as Jesus is Lord. It's uncomfortable to wait. We want to get out and do. Guys, that's, that's, that's the anguish God is saying. Be with me. Look at Gethsemane. Guys, watch with me. Suffer with me. If you look at the book of Job... He wept for seven days with his neighbors. The word, the word in the Hebrew is neighbors. And they mourned with him. I love this song. Oh, come and mourn with me a while. Jesus Christ has been crucified. The thing that, that you don't want to let go, that it, it just it pokes at you. And he says, no. Stop. The very part of you that wants to, oh, oh, yes, yes, I can go. No, that's the very part that has to die. That's the very part that has to go away and say, okay, Lord, no. I, I'm here for you. It's uncomfortable to wrestle. To be still and know that he is God. Guys, it comes with fastings. Sometimes you will lose sleep. It comes with crying and weeping. I'm not saying, if, if only I cry, it'll happen. I love the message David Diga Hernandez gave. He's like, I tried to battle every demon known in the book. And I tried, um, you know, taking authority. And it's to the point where, oh God, I got nothing left. You've got to help me. Now you're ready to listen. That's just ready to listen. That's just getting your foot in the door. And that's when you can get the Holy Spirit and walk in the Spirit. We've lost His heart and act as we don't want it. We don't. We don't care. Go to Psalm 14. Psalm 14, I'm reading from HCSB. The fool says in his heart, there is no, uh, God does not exist. They are corrupt. They do vile deeds. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the human race to see if there is one who is wise. Who seeks, one who seeks God. Proverbs 1 and Proverbs 9 says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. We need to receive correction. We've not wanted correction. We've allowed compromise in. I'm not just talking on the grand scheme of things of the nation or whatnot. No. Myself. One another. That's, that is what God is requiring. Remember, who has despised the day of small beginnings? If you do it in a little bit, you'll do it in the big things. If individually we're compromising, we will compromise. If in, in the book of Nehemiah, he said, this is our vision, and this is not socialism. He says, our vision is this. Everybody's apart. It is, it is not, oh yes, we're all in a collective. You are interdependent. Your, the success of this mission involves your participation. 
Victory for the Lord is based on how you will respond. Victory for God is based on how passionate you are for the Lord's things. All have turned away. All alike have become corrupt. There's no one who does good, not even one. Are you that one? Guys, are you that one? It's one of my children. I had a, we had a conversation. One of our children had a conversation. We had a conversation with him, and he was just broken because of the conversation that he had with him with with some friends. No mention of the blood of Jesus. No desire for eternity. Guys, time's running out. Do you see yourself as part of the game, like a football game, where every person is intricate? Or are you just there to watch? Are you just a spectator? I remember when I was in middle school, they, were, they, they had mandatory recess or whatnot. And there was... Uh, like the whole class, like sixth grade or you know, the whole English class or whatnot, they played kickball. And uh, came my turn to kick the ball, I kicked the ball, and I tried to run to the to you know, first base and second base. There were people literally in the way that were on that side, or they were on the defensive side or on the you know, just stop the ball. They stopped me from. I couldn't run. I was like, "Get out of my way!" I'm in a. I'm. I'm, I'm playing a game. I'm. I'm in this. Are you in the way? Are you in the team? First Timothy: No soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs. What is stealing your attention? What is keeping you from doing what's right? Are you holding fast to the promises you made before God and man? Saying, yes, I want Jesus. Okay. Let's put it to the test. Well, evildoers never understand. Now, God's evil is defined as this. People who swear falsely by his name. You see it, Psalm 139. Those are wicked. He said they swear falsely by your name. They're evil. They're Christian in name only. They consume my people as they consume bread. They do not call on the Lord. Oh, they do the right things. There's no burden in their heart. There's no fight. There's no desire for eternal things. We're in a sinking ship. Guys, do you understand? If God tells you to do something... To speak to a certain person. I'm giving examples, okay? You don't have to necessarily do this. Go pass out tracts somewhere. Leave them somewhere. Yeah, you can get in trouble, possibly. Like uh, Brother Andrew, he said, Lord, make seeing eyes blind. And God did. Because it was against the law. Our responsibility is to deliver the gospel. Our responsibility is to preach that Jesus Christ has come to set us free from sin. To set us free. And to empower us to do more. And to empower others. Do we have that heavenly vision? Paul says, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. To deliver the gospel. That Jesus saves. So, he's reminding us that we made a promise. I'm your father. If you don't want this, leave. I don't want you to leave, but I'm not forcing you. But you promised. Stay true to your word. It's time to make a stand. 1 Kings 18. I pray this is resonating with you. 
verse 21. If the Lord is God, follow him. So I looked up the Hebrew, and, and it goes like this. But if not, then don't. How long will you hop between two sentiments slash divisions? Come what may. We have nothing to lose here for following with G, uh, following Jesus. It involves the end of ourselves and the uplifting of Him. The anguish is this. This is the call to anguish. Is Jesus all you want? He becomes all you want when you find out He's all you need and He's all you have. Guys, is there something else occupying your thoughts? Lord, is there something, I ask now, in the presence of witnesses, Father, is there something that is hindering us? Something we're not willing to give up? Some stronghold? Something we've agreed to? Jesus, I, 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 just, I just pray you make it real. You, you, you make it evident, because we don't know ourselves. We are openly deceived to thinking that we know we got to figure it out. I'm talking to the leaders. I'm talking to those who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm talking to those who don't know who He is. And understand that He's calling you too. Because we will all give an account at the very least for what we say. And secondly, whether we've given our all to Him or not. Is something else occupying your thoughts? Guys, is something else occupying your thoughts? What are we thinking? What is our thought life? What is our prayer life? What is our Jesus life? Do you, do, you, do you love your spouse as much as you love Jesus? Realize that your relationship with your spouse, for instance, is a reflection of your relationship with you and God. Your relationship with your children is a, relation, is an, is a reflection of you with, with the Lord. Do you take him seriously? Do you take your kids seriously? Do you take your calling as a parent seriously with your kids? Do you take your calling as an individual before God seriously out there in the workplace? Out there among other family members? Do you know they can die and go to hell? Do you know that they are wretched sinners? Do you know, you, but for the grace of God, you were right there on a sinking ship, but for Jesus Christ, you were going down. Do you know that the blood of Jesus is sufficient for all things? Is he sufficient for all things? Do you treat it as such? Do you act like as, as if there are no tomorrows? Or do you act as if, oh God, I'm going to die today. I don't have. Now I'm not saying go run around frantic. What I am saying is there a holy fire urgency in you to say, you know what? I have a vision in front of me. I'm going to die soon. I don't care what happens to me between now and then, but I've got certain things for the Lord that the Lord has for me. Now, I'm not saying neglect your family. No, that's your first responsibility. Okay? First things first. Okay? Priorities. God gave you the family. You're responsible to them. Okay? They're your primary mission field, let's face it. Your wife and kids, your husband and kids, they're your mission field. For spouses that are unbelievers, that, that's fine. Keep praying for them. God will honor your prayer. He honors faithfulness. You keep preaching the gospel, no matter what you do. Let your speech be seasoned with what? The gospel. Jesus loves me, this I know. Because the Bible tells me so. That's all you can say. I'm not saying be fake. I'm saying be real. Someone says, how are you? <sighs> you know, the Lord really has been good to me. And that's, that's not an untrue statement. It's a statement of, I'm going to trust in His goodness. 
Oh, that salvation would come from Zion, Zion, Psalm 14. I will, in fact, I read this the other day in Psalm 13, actually. How long? Lord, did you forget me forever? My enemy will say I've triumphed over him, and my foes will rejoice because I'm shaken. But I have trusted in your faithful love. My heart will rejoice in your deliverance. I will sing to the Lord because he has treated me generously. Do you yearn for him? Do you cry for him? Are you baptized in anguish? Do you have a certain trysting time that when you get up and you're like, Oh God, I got up late. Oh God, I missed the time of devotional time with you. I'm sorry. Does that grieve you? Does that hurt you? Or do you just, uh stink. I overslept. I, I'm not condemning anyone. I, I'm guilty as charged. What I am saying, does it grieve you that injustice sweeps the land? Does it grieve you that 60 plus million babies are aborted? Does it grieve you that children are being confused? The ones that, those who, who send your kids to school, who, for one reason or another, does it grieve you that your children are getting confused there? Being taught that it's okay to explore yourself? Commit all sorts of filth against your body? Explore touching your private parts? Man and man, woman and woman is perfectly fine? That you don't have to be a certain gender? Does that bother you? Does it bother you? Not so much that agenda. Does it bother you that the people in authority are the ones who are making these statements that you trusted them to do what's right? Does that bother you that they are abusing their power? That the orphan and the widow, that their lands are being crossed? Does that bother you? That righteousness and truth is destroying this land? That fathers are not rising up and, 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 and praying for their families? That the women are, sure, they're godly mothers, godly women, hallelujah for them. But they're doing it all alone. Does that not bother you? That the fathers are disconnected? Oh no, that's her thing. She does the church thing. I, I take the kids to hunting or whatever. Does that bother you? I'm talking to you men. That your kids are going to hell or they're stunted or they're screaming, Daddy! I want your heart. Daddy, I want to know you. Does that bother you? That you see a man who's disconnected from his kids? That he's not transparent, he doesn't weep, he doesn't share his failures? Does that bother you? Does it bother you that women are going into foreign teaching and they're more ready to do that? then bless their children and honor their husbands? Does it not bother you that they don't have your heart? Does it not bother you that we have people trash-talking one another in the church? There's gossips. And yet we can't seem to get along. Isn't it that these three things testify the blood, the water, and the word? Do we not have one Father, one faith, one baptism, one Lord of all? One Jesus? Since when has he become your Jesus? Does that not bother you? That all would be made one just as we are one, Father? John 17? Does it not bother you that Jesus bled for all of us? Does it bother you? Does it bother you that our kids are not getting Jesus? They're getting religion. We don't want moral children. God forbid. It means we'll raise Pharisees. We want broken children. Broken in the sense that their hearts are broken. Rend your, rend your hearts. Don't rend your garments. Be broken. Be transparent with your kids. With your families. With your churches. You leaders who are, who are listening. You pastors. The most honorable thing you can do is to say, guys, I need to confess I'm critical, I'm or specific sins. 
Be real. It's time to get rid of the facade. Guys, throw a rock at that glass cathedral. Destroy it. I had a dream years ago when we were in Ohio where I saw this figure. There was more to the dream, but the part that really stands out was there's a armored man. He was big. He looked like a linebacker, just covered like a turtle, like from head to toe. And um, there were people in uniform with antiquated weapons, and they couldn't, they couldn't even fire a shot. They were scared. You could see them trembling. And a shot was fired that essentially, at first it hit the head three times. And he just laughed at those shots. But then there was a cry, Lord, what do I do? And the shot was fired into the belly, into the bowels, into the spirit. All the armor fell off, and it was a frail looking person. And he fell on his knees and he said, I need to pray. And he repented. And there was a revival, as far as the eye could see, bigger than any stadium, like multiple stadiums, hundreds of thousands, millions even. The Lord told me that pride covered fear. God opposes the proud, but he exalts the humble. Let your dignity die. Offer it up on the altar and allow yourself to be hurt by, by correction. Whoever is led by correction is wise. Proverbs. Proverbs 11. But he who rejects instruction is led astray. Reject comfort. I'm not saying be unsafe. I'm not saying go live as an ascetic to purposefully beat yourself. But the Lord's ways are not easy, but they're good. Say, Lord, I submit myself to you. Let it be a daily thing. Lord, I give myself to you. Do with it what you will. And believe in faith that the moment you get out of that prayer closet, first thing in the morning, that whatever happens is of the Lord's doing for your correction, reproof, and training in righteousness so that you would be equipped, furnished for every good work. That it is of the Lord and he's teaching you. Don't say, oh no, the devil's doing this. The devil's powerful. God's all powerful. The devil holds nothing to, to the Lord. The devil's an ant and the Lord's an elephant. Okay, in comparison. Don't even. The Lord is allowed for your testing and for the destruction of your, of your flesh. Submit to it. Father in heaven, thank you for the words I've, I've delivered my soul. Jesus, we love you. Teach us to submit to correction, training, and reproof. Let us love the training, the struggles, and the trials so that we would be furnished and equipped every good work for every good work. Just like a good soldier. In Jesus' name. Amen.